This is Smooth with Missy. This is Smooth with Missy. Smooth with Missy. And let's get started. Well, hello there. Hello. How are you? How are you doing today on day 13? Join me while I take out my headphones and get my SHIT together. And yeah, I have a few things to tell you. A few tiny little things to tell you. So, let's get started. Start your Stairmaster, your elliptical, your rower, your treadmill. Start whatever. Start any kind of movement. Start any kind of movement that you want to do, that you choose to do, move with Missy. So, it's your world. You do you. Just move. That's all we're doing. We're just moving. So, you remember me telling you a few videos ago that I got stung by a catfish. I got stuck by a catfish in between my two knuckles. One week later, I got a pinched nerve in my neck. Literally rolled over in bed and pinched a nerve in my neck. Literally rolled over, pain, muscle spasms. I have muscle spasms in my neck for two days and two nights. I have no idea how that li literally even happened, but I've been rear-ended a couple of times. And so maybe some residual of that, I, I don't know. Age, <laughs> maybe age has, uh, you know, plays a factor. I got over that, dealt with the catfish thing for like two months. The pinch nerve put me down for three weeks. Then, then, then I got COVID. My daughter got COVID and then I got COVID. And during all this time, I, I haven't gotten to work out because of having COVID. I would say I had a mild case. Still don't feel like exactly right. Water is a must. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Yoga ball, jack yoga me. Come back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, COVID came to town in this house. Skipped right over my husband. I don't, I don't really know how that's even possible. Like he lives in this house. Right when I got it, when I tested positive. We were in our bedroom. You know, Lauren was kind of staying away from me because she had just tested negative. I just tested negative and I tested positive. I wasn't feeling bad, but I had a sore throat, a little bit of a runny nose, and I was just tired. So I knew, I knew something was off, but I didn't necessarily think that I had gotten sick. My husband immediately came home, he got sent home from work. He goes, well, I'm gonna get it. There's no, <laughs> there's no reason why I'm gonna get it. I'm already screwed, like there's no need for us to quarantine. Cause I was like in the bed, I was like, I was gonna stay away from the rest of the house so I didn't contaminate anything. And he goes, I had my tongue in your mouth last night. And Lauren was like, <laughs> he goes, he like me like looks over and he's like, cause sometimes we kiss like that. <laughs> And it was so funny. I mean, she's not ignorant, obviously, but it was just how he said it. And he had, you know, I mean, we're all adults here, right? So that was really funny. He kind of like cut eyes towards her real quick. I'm still, this is actually my first Stairmaster workout since I got COVID. I felt bad for two days. I woke up extremely tired, zapped. Like, I had nothing to give. I had zero to give anyone. Uh, I could barely work, I could barely focus, and I laid in bed for about two days. Never ran a fever. I did lose my smell, which is now returned. My first day out of quarantine was the day after Thanksgiving. I just, I was taking a shower, and I noticed that I couldn't smell my body scrub. I have a, like a hemp brand body scrub, and I love it, and it's, it's got a very strong, distinct smell. And I couldn't smell it. And I was like, huh, that's weird, you know? Okay, and I got out of the shower, and I tried to smell this drain. Couldn't smell it, nothing. It smelled like nothing at all. You know, there's so many false positives. I did have that symptom, and so that became very real to me. Because Lauren, my daughter, she, she never felt bad. The only reason why we tested her was because she woke up. She said she felt like she was running a fever. She has to take her temperature every morning when she enters into school due to her activities. So they tip her as soon as she walks in the door. So I took her temperature 
and it was 99. And I thought, okay, maybe you're hot from sleep. Maybe you are hot from sleep. You just need to chill, and we'll take it again in 15 minutes. Took it again, it was 100. So I was like, I can't send you to school. They're gonna send you home. So I, I monitored her for most of the day. Temperature got up to 101, but she felt fine. And I ended up taking her, just because we didn't know. And we have parents who we want to be around. We want to spend time with them, we want to see them, but we also know that this could affect them way differently than it will affect us. Rightfully so, this affected me way worse than it did her. She never even felt bad. I can honestly say I felt bad for two days. And then I felt fine for about three days. I even came in here and did a couple like very easy workouts, very mild workouts. Three days after I started feeling better, I got this excruciating, soul crushing headache. I do not believe I've ever had a migraine in my life. I think this was it. I think this was my first one. I couldn't function. Like I can normally push through, power through, whatever, buck up, put my big girl panties on, all that, and just go on about my day. No, I was on the couch for two and a half days with a headache. And apparently, if you Google, that is a thing with COVID patients. Breathing still is, I never got short of breath, but I felt myself needing to take deep breaths more often than I'm used to. And even today, super low level, you know, backwards, you know, taking this step backwards here. My ears feel funny. That's the only two things lingering on. I still feel like, I like my ears are clogged and I just have this deep breath issue. And then when I, start to exert myself, start to do some cardio, movement. I notice just kind of, <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Just enough to give you a little, you know, reality check, let you know, put you in your place real quick, let you know you ain't invincible. And how the <laughs> my husband's immune system is that much better <laughs> than mine, I have no idea. So let's take a little water break. If you do find yourself with COVID, I believe water did help. The first day, I didn't drink hardly anything. I didn't have anything to eat or drink. Just, I just didn't feel well. The next day, I forced some water down and I actually felt better. It's one of those benefits, one of those benefits of water really is good for your just overall well being, overall health. But I'm back and we're gonna do this because it's a new year and we're moving. And we're creating this daily habit and we're just happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. I'm lucky to be here. Let's do this. I'm gonna move a little slow today because like I said, this is my first actual Stairmaster workout since I had COVID. Almost two weeks ago. This is your first time joining Move with Missy. Go back to day one. And it might catch you up, get you up to speed. So I'm really trying to stay organized for you. The macro talk. Promised you some macro talk. You're gonna have to circle back to this video or leave me a comment, send me a message, and send me, probably more privately, send me your email and I will send you a, just a template, just a little resource document to help you calculate your macros. This is for flexible dieting. This is very similar to counting calories. It's just like counting calories on steroids. And only better because you really hone in on those macros that you need. Your fat, your protein, and your carbs. You hone in on that perfect number, that perfect ratio for your body, based for your body and your needs and your goals. And it just, you know, it's, it's taking it to the next level. I'm gonna share that with you. Right now, first, you need to calculate your T, D, E, E. That's your total daily energy expenditure. 
It's what you burn doing nothing. It's if you were lying in bed, literally almost in a coma. Because actually, you do burn calories in your sleep. So it's not even when you're sleeping. It's when your body is just completely still doing nothing. Almost in like a vegetative state. To do this, visit. And enter your information. Be honest. Enter your true weight. Enter your true activity level. I would say don't enter an activity level. Don't, because this is going to be based for you what you're going to need to consume every day. You may not work out every day. You may not work out as hard every day. So choose sedentary on the activity level. You do not need to have the body fat percentage. It's great if you do, but only enter it if you have an accurate recent number. It will skew your numbers in a way that may not be helpful. So you calculate your TDEE, -E, total daily energy expenditure, okay? Say you are a 35 year old woman and you are 145 pounds and you're 5556, five, five, average height, right? I don't know, I'm making this up as I go. You come out to about 1,643 calories that you will need to consume daily to maintain your weight. This would be to maintain that weight. If you wanted to lose weight, you would need to put those calories into a deficit. You would need to shave off no less than 200 calories off of that number to come up with your macros. If you wanted to lose weight based on the stats that you entered, based on the results it gives you, lose weight, cut, lose weight, you have to bring them down. Here's the thing, here's a little tip. You wanna bring them down slowly. You wanna bring them down as little as possible in increments as slowly as possible. You want to lose weight eating the highest amount of calories you can. You need that nutrition. Your body needs it. Your mind, your sanity needs it. Your energy levels need it. Your workout. If you want to move with Missy, you got to eat. You got to have energy to come hang out, right? So you want to lose weight eating the highest amount of calories. If you are wanting to shed some weight, I suggest shave off 200 calories. Start there and use that number to do the rest of this exercise, okay? So you'll take that number, you're gonna start with fat. You're gonna do fat first. And you need 0 0.3, 30% to 40% fat. Women typically need a little bit more for our hormones. Hormonally, a little higher fat is good for women, most women. I don't know your story. I don't know your history. I don't know your genes and what you've you know, gotten from your ancestors. And so your body may be different. So think about it. If you've lost weight in the past, were you at a higher fat level or were you at a lower fat level? Do you have high cholesterol? You have to think about that. You're gonna to wanna to go with that more 30% range. Either way, for this exercise, we're gonna take that calorie number, 1,643 calories, right? Yes, 1,643 calories, and we're gonna multiply times 0.35 will give you 575. 575 calories from fat is what you will need to consume every day. To find out how many grams that is, you're gonna divide that number by nine. And you're gonna come up with 64 grams of fat. It's because there's nine calories in one gram of fat. There's four calories in one gram of protein, and four calories in one gram of carbs. 
So you take your 575, which is 35% of your total, it's 575 calories, 64 grams of fat. Okay, move on. Write that down. Write all that down, move on. Protein is 0.8 to one gram per pound of body weight. Multiply your weight either times 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.9, or one, all the way, 0 0.8 to one. If you are a meat eater, if you have no problem hitting your protein goals, if you have no problem drinking protein shakes, eating eggs, eating yogurt, eating milk, eating milk, yeah right, protein shakes, meat, fish, chicken, all of that, if you have no problem eating those things, consuming those things, knocking those things out, being able to consume them easily and you have access to them and you want to go for a higher protein, shoot for the one gram per pound body weight. I did 0.8 for this exercise. Most people I meet struggle with this. So I always 0 0.8, 0 0.8 for you to maintain all that beautiful muscle that you already have. So you take that body weight and you multiply it times 0.8 that gives you 116 grams of protein a day. You're gonna eat 64 fat, and you're gonna eat 116 grams of protein. Next, carbs is your filler. It comes last, the rest is from carbs. So you take 1,643 calories, and you deduct your 575 from fat, your 464 from protein, and you come up with 604 calories from carbs. Divide it by four, and that's 151 grams of carbs. So that's 64 fat, 116 protein, and 151 carbs. I know you low carb fanatics, that seems really high in carbs. And it is, it's a little high. But if you're active and you are feeding your body good nutritious foods 80% of the time, if this was your stats, you could maintain your weight at those numbers. If you are active, you're filling your body with nutritious foods, you are meeting these macros. You're not going over them. You're hitting them daily, consistently, and you are feeding your body nutritious foods 80% of the time. You can maintain on these macros if these were your stats. Here is the next step. You've got to weigh your food. You've got to log it into an app similar to MyFitnessPal and you've got to track it. You've got to weigh out the food, pay attention to the serving, track it in MyFitnessPal and hit them consistently every day. Keep up your movement habit drink your water. If you have not seen any change in the scale in two weeks, you got to stick to it for at least two weeks. You have to trust the process. I know that sounds annoying and you probably get tired of hearing that. You got to trust the process. If after two weeks the scale hasn't budged, you adjust. You just adjust a little bit. You don't just throw everything out the window you just say, okay, I'm gonna drop my carbs, 10 grams, about 10 grams. Give it another two weeks. Find that sweet spot. If you're trying to lose weight, find that sweet spot and the scale will start to go down. But you really do. You wanna lose on eating the highest amount of calories as possible. You wanna maintain on eating the highest amount of calories possible. If you can maintain your current weight, at 1800, why eat 15? Just think about that. You wanna lose eating the highest amount of calories possible. If you see your numbers and you're like, you know, I just, I just don't wanna eat that many carbs. Maybe you don't eat a lot of bread. Maybe something that's high in carb hurts your stomach or you're allergic to it. Then you're just like, I'm not, I'm not going to have that many carbs. You take the carbs and you give them to protein. Or you take the carbs and you give it 
to fat. You just adjust. Now, if you want to move it to fat, it's a little bit different because there's four calories in one gram of carb, and there's nine in one gram of fat. If you like to drink alcohol, if you are gonna have some drinks, enjoy a beer, I don't know, a margarita, but you're super high in sugar, so save that for like, like a cheat day and you're not tracking, because this is totally gonna ruin your day. You divide the number of calories in the drink by seven and you take it from carbs. That's the factor for calculating alcohol. And because the reason for that is when you consume alcohol, and I'm not judging here, I'm a willing participant most of the time, you, when you consume that alcohol, well, it's basically like poison. Your body stops utilizing your nutrients, your fats, your proteins, and it processes that alcohol. It just stops everything and it just hums in on that alcohol. So it's all, it's all sugar and carbs. So it kind of, it kind of sucks. So vodka soda water and like those little Mio juices. And that is like a pretty fast, I wouldn't say high level. We dug into it a bit. Please comment with your questions, your concerns. Push back at me if I've said something that you don't agree with. My focus is more of a companion, a resource versus a coat. This is it. I'm not saying this is for everyone. I'm not saying that this is the only way. It all works. You just have to do it. You just have to pick one, one lifestyle, one style of nutrition, diet, lifestyle, and stick with it. Put your focus into it. You show up every day and do it, and it'll work. But this is what I do, and I'm just sharing with you what I do. I think this is about my seventh year. I think March of 2021 will put me into my seventh year counting macros. And I've told you before, I gained weight in college. I gained weight about 10 years later, and that's when I started counting my macros and I have never looked back and I've maintained within three or four pounds maybe five if I have a vacation but you get the idea I hope this was helpful to you I hope that it was clear and if I need to do a follow-up just let me know just talk to me talk to me and tell me what you need that way I can deliver because I want I want this to be valuable to you. So tell me how you're doing. Share those before and after pictures. I hope you're having a great new year. I hope it's going exactly the way that you want it to and you're getting everything that you hoped for. And if you're not, I hope it gets better for you. So join me for day 14, where we do the bands. Where we do the bands. Later!